This is a podcast by The Straits Times. Hello and welcome to Pop Vouchers, a pop culture podcast by The Straits Times. My name is Jen Lee, and that is Yosem Joe. Hello, everyone. Okay, so of course this week we are gonna talk about the best drama that MediaCorp has had in years. In, in years. many years, we're talking, of course, about the Ian Fang and Carrie Wong saga involving sexting, strawberries, and uh, some light archery. Yeah, shooting. <laughs> okay, we'll touch more on that later. Okay. Um, but it's very, very salacious, all right? Okay. So in case you guys haven't guessed by now, we're talking about stars, social media, and stupidity this week. Mm-hmm. Um, so because course, a lot of things blew up on social media this week, not just Ian Fine and Carrie Wong. Right. I mean, it, not this week, like over the past two over weeks. Over the past couple of weeks. And of course, we're also talking about Tosh Chang. Um, stepping down as Ping Dot Ambassador. So that was a huge um, scandal with his old tweets resurfacing, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, getting dug up uh, his homophobic and um, misogynistic tweets and sexist yeah. tweets. We'll touch more on that in a bit. So we are going to summarize for you the Ian Fang Kerry Wong saga yes. with a little bit of light role playing. Right, because <laughs> I know a lot of you out there are like, oh my god, so much has happened. Like, yes. catch us up to speed. TLDR, we'll do a TLDR dramatic role-playing version for you, okay? okay? Right here on Pop Vultures. Well, basically, what happened is that Carrie Wong, either her phone got stolen or her phone was lost or somebody hacked into her account because leaks were coming out of her Instagram mm-hmm. and she had this Instagram DMs with... They, sli- they slide into each other's DMs, like, okay? So she oh had this Instagram God. DMs with Ian Fang and we're just going to read out some of the juicy parts which shows that they were in... um, They were in a weird sort of relationship, right? <sighs> they were perhaps more than just friends. Okay, putting so... Putting it lightly. Let's go to the one involving a fruit. Alright, okay. strawberries. This is the strawberry scene. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I will be Carrie. And then she goes... Ni shuo na yi zhong fang shi ha ha. Xing ling wo ti. And then she says... Xing ling wo ke yi ha ha. Do shou le nema duo nian le. Na sheng ti na? <laughs> oh my god. What? Maintain the case stay in character. Ni biao nong dao wo yu qing. Ha ha ha. Xiao bai chi. Wo jin liang a. Zhong cao mei zui duo. Zai nong tong wo zhen de hui yao hui ni. Okay, end scene, scene. Okay, so, so basically to translate. She basically says, you know, what? Um, they basically they're flirting lah. Like, so he's talking about like, oh, do you want me spiritually or physically? Mm-hmm. And then Ian Fang is like, oh, what about your body? Blah blah blah. Then she said, as long as you don't uh, me. hurt me by yeah. bruising me. Oh my god. And then he says like, oh law, you little fool. And then say something like, I'll um, try my best. I try my best. I'll plant a lot of strawberries, strawberries. which is a Taiwanese slang for love bites lah. Mm. Yeah. Then she says, if you hurt me anymore, I will bite you. And it's like. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty it's pretty salacious yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. it really blew up because both of them have separate partners right Kerry Wong admitted to a relationship with Boris Lin um, Ian Fang has been linked to fellow media cop actress Rebecca Lim they are rumoured to be together but um, it's fairly an open secret that they are together and have been together for some time mm-hmm so that's what happened. Of course, Tosh Young's old tweets came back to haunt him after he was appointed Ping Dot Ambassador. Right. Um, he apologised for the tweets and then later on, apparently without consulting Ping Dot, stepped down as Ping Dot Ambassador. Right. In a very tearful... Uh, Video I think on, it, yeah. on, on IGTV. Yes, yeah, yes. So it was, it was bad, okay? Okay. Now let's go on a little bit to talk about privacy, mm-hmm. all right? Because as much as we all laugh at the tags and the tweets and everything, the conversation leaks between Ian and Carrie is a complete violation of their privacy. And they shouldn't really need to apologize to anyone else aside from their partners, right? Right, right. because technically it's none of our business, right? Like, yeah. you know, it's it's like if I want to um, send a, you know, sexy text to someone, I don't expect, like, the whole world to read it. Like, you know, it's really between the two of us. Yes. Um, you know, and uh, from what we understand, Carrie lost her phone, is that right? Yeah, apparently the Carrie's, Carrie lost her phone at the airport or something. So mm. people are speculating that that might be when her phone, you know, she basically, she got compromised lah. Yeah. And we totally support that the perpetrator should be punished mm. duly. Yeah. And they have since made police reports and we hope that that all goes well for them. Right. And that whoever leaked these tweets, are, or not tweets, I mean these DMs are caught. That being said, I mean... 
Sorry. Yeah. Bo Bian. It was it was leaked, right? Bo Bian you it has been leaked. People mm-hmm. care because you are a celebrity, because you are a public figure. Yeah. And it looks bad. Right. Also just a side note. The DMs between Ian Fang and Carrie Wong took place on their official Instagram accounts, which right. is mega stupid. Like, if you have a partner and you are, you want to cheat on your partner and you are a public figure, you want to cheat on your partner with another public figure, can you guys at least do it on, like... On the DL, on the down low, yeah. and, like, maybe try something like an encrypted... Uh, 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 messaging, messaging service. App, like yeah. WeChat or Line or something. Or, so- or something else. And don't <laughs> use your official blue tick Instagram accounts right. la, to sex with your friend right which made it very hard for them to deny that it was them indeed that sent those texts you know yes all these sagas played out on chiefly on social media right mm-hmm. like you know um they were they broke out on social media they uh were uh, there was damage control on social media and and people tried to uh, reach out to each other and like resolve things on social media whether or not it worked is a different thing obviously yes. um and but tell us Jen why why do you think that people um you know take to social media these days like cuz it wasn't like that in the past yeah, of course. I mean, firstly, it has become a tool for celebrities. It's basically their PR tool now. You don't actually need to have a publicist. You can have a statement on your Twitter or your Instagram and people will flock to win and that will be your public statement. Mm-hmm. Unlike in the past when you actually had to, you know, organize a sit down with a journalist you trust or, uh, you know, get on the show or, you know, organize a press conference, even though they still do that stuff. But... Now, social media is kind of mainly the way that celebrities like to communicate their thoughts. And it's not always helpful because as we have seen evidence with all these scandals, social media is instantaneous. That's what attracts us to social media. You can get something very raw, very unfiltered, very off the moment. Unfortunately, that also means that a lot of the celebrities reacted on emotions. And Mm -hmm. a lot of them didn't. I feel like what I'm getting out of this, a lot of them were saying certain things in the throes of emotions like rage, like jealousy, like anger. And that's not healthy, right? Right. It, it just it like totally eclipsed their common sense, you know? Yeah, and it eclipsed their rationale. Right. So definitely the instantaneous nature of social media is not always the most helpful uh, to celebrities, right? Mm-hmm. We will list out some examples later. But for now, I would just like to tell everybody that if you're listening to Pop Vouchers and you enjoy us, do find us on the Straits Times Podcast channel, iTunes, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. You can also find our videos and our audio on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So do like and rate us. Now back to our show and back to the people who did not behave that well. On social media. On social media. All right. So I think one of the people who really shocked me with how how unwell thought out his social media post was mm-hmm. was um Boris Lin. Boris Lin. Carrie Wong's boyfriend. Wong's boyfriend. Carrie Wong, right. Yes, because he Who is Boris Lin, by the way, for people who don't okay. know? Because honestly, I didn't know about him before this. I also don't really know about him. From what I can gather, he's already not in the industry, but he was definitely a model with Catwalk, which is a Taiwanese um, mod- modeling agency. I see. And I think he did have some light acting roles as well. So he is somebody who who has some, I think, has some experience like, with celebrity, right? So he put out two statements. So the first one on Instagram was, Oh, Mr. Fang, referring to Ian, is very good friends with my partner. You know, they say things that can be very straightforward with one another. And then he said, But I still feel that he had, he was very proactive in his words. And I hope that after this incident, he will no longer get in between me and Carrie. Which is like, shot fire. Basically throwing Ian under the bus. Yes. And saying that, you know... Carrie mm-hmm. really didn't want this? Is, is that what he was trying to say? Sort of. He was putting the blame on Ian Fang. Right. And then he had... And then Ian Fang came out with an apology about how he needs to be accountable for his actions, blah, blah, blah. A very standard apology. And then he, after that apology, fired back even harder and said that you, Ian Fang, are the one with all the faults and you never came out to apologise or blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly you are apologising. Why are you acting pitiful? Why are you acting innocent? Right. Even when other people have stopped, you have tri- you have harassed, you have sent flirty texts, and you have caught uh, her late at night. So Ooh. it's really shots fired. It's really throwing him on the bus and showing that, you know, he's the one at fault. Unfortunately, mm. Boris Lin also kind of undermined um, Kerry Wong and Ian Fang's very first statement. Oh, and right. he basically caught... He, 
unknow- unwittingly Outed prove that their, their, like their lie, yeah, right? prove that his girlfriend is a liar right. because it shows that what happened between Ian Fang and Carrie Wong had some degree of truth to it truth to yeah. it it wasn't just jokes because Ian and Carrie claimed that it was done in jest it those was messages were in jest yeah. but now he's coming to say that there it was, was not. indeed something going on there was an element of something else right. and so Boris Lin unwittingly undermined his own girlfriend caught her a liar <laughs> while trying to defend her while trying right. to defend her so not very smart there Boris not very smart yeah. there and the nerve speaking of the nerve um, that Boris Lin had I know this is a man who is smitten with Kerry Wong. He is smitten. He is in love with her. Mm. And he wants to defend her. Okay, I get that. I respect that. But he went on Rebecca Lim's Instagram to defend his girlfriend when other people were saying, oh, Kerry Wong is such a... Such a... <laughs> and a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very not, not, not very nice things, basically. Not very nice things. And he said, be careful about what you said to the, comment- to the commenters on... Rebecca, Rebecca Lim's, Lim's Instagram and then said I don't know about other people's boyfriend but my girlfriend never betrayed me which I'm sorry Boris <laughs> step away from the iPhone right. like this is a woman who has not made a statement this is a woman who has never admitted to a relationship with Ian right. Fang I don't care whether you think that is right but this is not your place to drag her in yeah and, and if it, they were indeed in a relationship she was just cheated on so yes so step away do not Go to her Instagram account to defend your girlfriend who was caught in her scandal with her boyfriend. Right. Like, don't do that. that so Boris. out of his place. It's, it's he's just like that was that was really uncalled for. He was not the only Boris Lim was not the only one who sort of misfired on social media um this past two weeks. Uh the case of Tosh Jung, which is a bit different because it was a case of his social media past coming back to haunt him. Right. At a point where he's been appointed as an ally for L- LGBTQ um event Pink Dot, right? Right, right. And, and then his past homophobic tweets got dug up. Dug up and then he tried to do damage control, but that in a way also backfired. Um yes. uh, that's how we feel. Um can we just summarize it for everyone? So basically uh, he was appointed Pink Dot, okay, and when he was appointed, he also did acknowledge actually some of his discriminatory views in the past. Um, you know, on IG, he, he did post a photo and he said, looking back now on you know his behavior, he says, I feel awful and disgusted. Um, but then, uh, Facebook user Sarah Yip posted all his old tweets online, and mm-hmm. that kind of introduced a whole new audience to his. Uh, past to, bigotry. To, to his past bigotry, exactly. Like to what, how he actually thought and. Um, the really ugly stuff that he said in the past. So, for example, he would say... Um, um, I got gay friends and I'm totally cool with gay guys, dot, 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 until they hit on me. Right. Which is not even the most unsavory thing that he tweeted. Yeah, but, he um, said other things. Like, he said other this things. butch in front of me has a nice ass. Hmm, wasted. Yeah, so, this is to quote Tosh, by the way. Uh, yeah. That's not us, um, okay? It's, it's not great. Um, And also, it speaks of a certain toxic masculinity and a certain... A certain weird obsession straight guys have, as if, as if because they are like it, straight guys always think that gay guys are into them, and mm. I never understand that because mm. honest to God, Me neither. gay guys have really high standards. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yes, I wouldn't think of Tosh as somebody who meets those standards, but never mind. I don't want to shade him here. Yeah, but. that's not about. Okay, it's not about his standards but you yeah, know yeah. But, so very unsavory tweets got surfaced right. and of course he rightly got dragged through the mud for it mm-hmm. but um, to his credit he apologised okay he came out to apologise but I think uh, which is a good thing let's, let's I think if you can own up to your mistakes okay all power yes, to you right yes, let's, let's all agree um, he didn't deny it unlike Ian and Carrie where they tried to lie at first but the way in which he did it um, I think rubbed a lot of people the wrong way um, I think the way he apologised he basically put the standard internet apology video, right? And then he pulled out of Ping Dot without consulting Ping Dot. That is what that is the information that is coming out right now. And honestly, up to that point, I was with him. I was like, you know, this boy shouldn't this man shouldn't be judged by things that he thought ten years ago. Nobody is born woke. Right. I was with him all the way up to the apology video because I felt like, you know what? Con- stepping down without consulting Ping Dot is so irresponsible. It speaks of such, like, you don't think of anybody else but yourself. I think that's also what rubbed me the wrong way. You don't think of the yeah. collateral damage that you're causing. What about all the other people that yeah. that put together this event that was involved in appointing you? You right. don't even think of talking to them they and telling them? They chose you for a reason. And yes. like a lot of people pointed out, you could have been a symbol for change. You for could change, have been for that person to show that, you know... 
to show everyone else like you know yes uh, you know I used to misunderstand the LGBTQ community but now I am a reformed person and so can you guys right? you could have been that person but instead he chose to buckle under pressure and step down now we're not saying that it, uh, it was easy to deal with all the pressure I mean it wasn't it wasn't could, definitely you, he was dealing with some ugly stuff yeah you saw his apology video he was crying I don't think that was uh, good acting I, I think that was genuine emotion I think it was genuine emotion but that's the problem right whether or not he's sincere that to me is all moot because he whether or not he intended it he made it about himself okay and he did distract from Ping Dot's message okay yes. which is about freedom to love and love wins mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and unfortunately this whole incident also made more people turn against the LGBTQ community and it divided the LGBTQ community as well because some people were saying like, you know, many netizens were like, oh, why are you all so angry? You should just forgive him. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you should, he's already a changed man. Like, aren't you Mm -hmm. guys, aren't you guys hypocrites for saying like, you know, love wins, love is love and then here you are hating on someone. But, Mm-hmm. Here's what I don't like because I don't think you should tell the queer community how to feel. Okay, forgiveness is not a fast food meal. It's yeah. not something that can it's just happen right. overnight. It's not. Yeah. Enti- you are not entitled You're to not forgiveness. You're not entitled to it, yes. and that is what I was really uncomfortable about when people were just saying, "Just forgive him." You know, yeah. I want to quote Facebook user Nora Leah here. Okay, uh, this was one of the best um, uh, posts about the whole incident, and and she says. To tell a whole marginalised community that they should not be angry with his past mistakes and to immediately forgive Tosh is to police their own autonomy. Yes, definitely. So anyway, that was that. Uh, It's very exhausting talking about it. Yes. A lot of issues. um, I'm sure you guys have opinions as well. Yeah. Uh, Please tell us what you think. I Yeah, please write in to tell us what you think about this. Definitely, um, Tosh Jiang didn't play the game well. I feel that he was genuine but definitely he should not have stepped down without consulting Ping Dot. It made him look very bad. Right. Um, now on the converse side, who did play the social media game well? I mean, let's talk a little bit here about oh. the classy, classy Rebecca Lim. Jen's favourite. <laughs> <laughs> I love her too. I think she's the closest thing we have to the next arts year. Yeah, she is. She she's, is. She's, and um, yeah. she's, she's so good at this because... Okay, firstly, she never admitted to a relationship with Yun Fang. So she's firstly already not obligated to reply. But she was dragged through she was dragged through a lot of conversations about the Yun Fang Carry Wong saga. Mm-hmm. And guess what she did? She quietly unfollowed everybody. She <gasps> now follows zero people on Instagram, which is, can I just say, a classic G Dragon move? My <laughs> Love of my life, my man, my K-pop king, GD, who is right now in army, bless his heart. Bless um, his heart. He, when he broke up with his Japanese model actress girlfriend, Kiko Mizuhara, who is like literally the love of his life. I can do another podcast about this. I know you can, Jen. Yes. Like, why don't we um, just do another one on g Dragon alone? Yeah, we should, we should. <laughs> and then he, when he broke up with Kiko, they unfollowed one another and then he went on to unfollow everybody else on his Instagram account. So he's... It's a form of saying something without actually having any printed words. Right. It's actually yes. very powerful. It's very powerful. It's saying that I don't want to see anything. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to be on social media and be assaulted by this onslaught of stuff mm-hmm. from my friends, from people who support me, from people who don't support me, from people who support him, from people who support her. I don't need it. Right. It's, it's super powerful. I think of it as a, it's so classy because it, in a way it's like a social media detox. Yeah, she's you know? saying I'm cleansing myself of yeah. this crap and just going off, right? Yeah. So it was it was very classy of her. Right. And she actually posted today, um, never really touched on the topic, but just showing that she's doing well, right. which I think the public wants to know. Right, and she, she posted... Uh, a, a very happy bright picture right yes yes which a happy said, bright picture which said um, more love less hate wishing you sunshine like Aww, something like that so yes. sweet yeah very sweet Um, I think another good player uh, someone who handled this whole incident well was uh, Lawrence Wong yes again a supporting character in yes. this like in Media Corp's like, okay. biggest drama of the year I but think <laughs> context is that when the text leaked uh, when the DMs leaked it, was, it wasn't just the sext um, they also criticised Lawrence Wong. They basically shaded Lawrence Wong and said that he got where he... Ian Fang said he got to where he is because of his looks, his connections um, and luck. Right, yes. right. Yes, and then Lawrence Wong hit back with an episode of an interview that he did and said that when I gave this interview, I didn't realise that I would be giving the best rebuttal uh, to people who says I got where I am today by connections, luck and looks. Yeah. 
so and he talked about pointed. his hard work and everything. His work, his and, struggle. And, 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 yeah, his struggle to the top because obviously he's so popular now because he made it on Yancy my Palace. favorite show, Yancy Palace. It's Hai Lan Cha. Hai Lan Cha, correct. And we have done another podcast on that, so please check out our Yancy Palace episode. Mm-hmm. But back to this program. Yeah, so... It was very assertive, right? It was very mm-hmm. assertive. He, he showed that he's not the kind to just stand back and take it when people say untrue things about him. Right. But at the same time, it was very classy because when he asserted himself and then when the two of them apologised to him, he immediately accepted it and said, yeah. we're moving on, all right? Yeah. This this is, I'm okay now, you know, right. whatever. In very other words, classy. Yeah, in other words, he was the bigger man. He was the know? bigger he man, really definitely. was the bigger man. But, you know, all this whole thing about social media and whether celebrities handle it well... Ultimately, can we just agree it's because celebrities just depend so much on public perception, right? Yes. You know, public perception, their image, you know, their persona, their public persona um, is everything to them, at least for their careers, you know? And so at the end of the day, for me, you know, I believe that this is just part and parcel of being a celeb. You know, mm. you can't run from it, you can't hide from it. You just have to, to deal with it, but you need to, like, be really conscious of the optics. Like, you know, if you want to avoid scandal and drama, then come out and admit it first if you know you've done something wrong, like, you know, like mm. uh, in Tosh's case, for example, before someone exposes and unmasks you. But this is also a good lesson in telling everybody that whatever you post on social media is permanent and it will follow you. Yes, and so you definitely. should probably be really careful when you tweet or when you Instagram or when you do whatever stuff on social media because it will follow you. Mm. So what do you think is going to happen to uh, all our... Uh, all, the, so, all the stars so, involved yeah. in this scandal. Exactly. I think Tosh will probably be fine. I don't have a high opinion of him given how he handled this, given how he stepped down without telling Pindot. I think it was very irresponsible. But... That being said, I appreciate that he did apologize. I appreciate that he knows that he has changed. And um, the great thing about what happened with Tosh is that the Ian Fang and Kerry Wong saga broke out at the same time. Mm. So his issue actually kind of got overshadowed. And I have no doubt that people will continue to work with him because he did show that he he did show some sincerity la. So props to him. He will be fine. Um, I think we can all say for a fact that I don't think Ian Fang, Kerry Wong and Rebecca Lim will work together all that much in the future. <laughs> yeah. They are all in the same company, but um, I actually don't it's think... It's going to be super awkward. It's I... going to be like Pan think... Ling Ling and Hong Kui Fang yes. all over again. Now this is the uh, this is the part we've all been waiting for. Jen and I want to give out some uh, special awards, awards for, yes. for you know stars and their social media spats and stupidity. We want to give out awards because we feel like it's been so exciting uh, and we want to just like, you know, tell you which were the best and worst players. Okay, all right. So why don't so... you start off, Jen? Most valuable player, I think we all agree. Rebecca Lim, girl. Girl, Woo! we got you, girl. Also, just to say, Bex, you are beautiful. You are amazing. And you definitely deserve better than Ian Fang. That was a step down, girl. <laughs> that was a step down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're getting personal here. Okay, huh? but okay. girl, yeah. we are behind you totally. You are classy and we love you, all I right? You. Most valuable player, all right? Okay, best drama of the year. Of course, Ian and Carrie. Yeah, we this already is great. We like, gave it away at the start. It's Ian and Carrie. It is so. It is such an amalgamation of everything. Yeah. That is that we love about celebrity. Like, it's yeah. just there's so many elements like the sex element, then the dishing on your co-stars element behind the scenes drama yeah. is, is great. Yeah. Right? Um, biggest loser, I would say, there are two here. Boris. I think. Boris Lin, because he really... all Everything that he did on social media made made himself, his girlfriend, Ian Fang, look worse. Yeah. Like, it was very upsetting. Yeah. And then, of course, Tosh Jung, because yeah. I think... Tosh could have been a winner. He could really have could winner. have been a winner. He could have played as well. He, I think, um, by, by, by stepping down without consulting everyone and, like, by just buckling under the pressure. Like we said, you know, we know it's not easy, but... Um, no, he I played feel like his, he played his hand bad. Yeah, he had the power to be so much more, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. So, well, we, we hope he's he's doing fine now, you know. If yeah. Tosh is listening, um, and the biggest winner is a little bit of a surprise, <laughs> Sam Joe. Why don't you tell us who the biggest winner is? <laughs> biggest winner is drum roll, please. Brrr, Kate Spade. Yes, it's Kate Spade. <laughs> I know everybody is probably thinking why, but this is because Rebecca Lim's uh last post before this scandal broke out was a sponsored post of her with a Kate Spade bag. Right. And that post has 176 comments as compared to previous posts of hers which had maybe about 50 
30, 40, 60 yeah. comments. So, so Kate Spade actually really lucked out because like, you know, <laughs> everyone was going to Rebecca's um, IG page to see if she's going to make an announcement yes. or something, right? And then no, she didn't. She just kept quiet until until yes. today's post. And then people kept commenting underneath it to console her. Yeah, including Zoe Day 10, uh, Hui Yu Jie. She was like, so sweet, then with a heart. <laughs> like, yeah, you know? so a lot of stuff. And then, Basically, Kate Spade's po- that Kate Spade post got a lot of engagement. Yeah, a lot of likes. So on that note, Kate Spade definitely won this two past two weeks. But we have to return to our most valuable player to end this podcast. Quoting Ms. Rebecca Lim, Best Actress. More, More love, love, less, less hate. hate. Wishing, wishing you sunshine, sunshine always. always. And that's your dose of pop culture for this week. If you have any ideas on what we should talk about, please leave a comment or email us at podcast at sph.com.sg. You can find us on the Straits Times Podcast channel, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. So do like and rate us. Now, he's Sam Joe. And she's Jen. And we, we are Pop vouchers. vouchers. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. That was an SPH Podcast. Find us on iTunes, Google Podcasts and streaming on Google Home. Do send your feedback to podcasts at sph.com.sg. You can also check out more podcasts on various topics at straightstimes.com and bt.sg. 